Hello everyone. I'm Ramesh. I'm a technical project manager for Big Data Projects. This is my first video I'm publishing in my channel Data Avenue. So today we are going to see what is STLC and the importance of it, the different models and phases. This is a fundamental for an IT engineer and particularly for the entry level folks who are new to IT industry. So let's begin with the definition, what is CSTLC, right? So this is what we are going to see today. The significance, phases, models, and um, typical project plan as an example. So if you look at the objective of the IT industry, right? So what we are going to do is, we have to create a software to automate something or to address any pain points Something like, uh, for example, creating a new portal or automate a report generation kind of. So the objective is to create a high quality software. In order to achieve this objective, we need a proper planning, design and execution, right? When I say execution, it is the development and end-to-end -end testing. To achieve this, there is a process used in the industry that is called SDLC, the software development life cycle. Right. If you see the definition, it's a framework or process defining different tasks performed at each step in the software industry process. Right. It starts from as numbered year one, two, three, four, five, six. It's starting from the planning, analysis, and then implementation, and then testing, and then we are getting into the maintenance mode, right? So what is the significance of using this? The significance is, as I mentioned, to produce a high quality software. There are important factors are that should meet or exceed the customer expectation and it's not only the expectation, it's cost effective and also the we have to do it in the appropriate timeline. These are all very, very important. That's why there is a process of the SDLC, right? So let's uh, move on, whatever the, the different phases, what you see it here. The first one is, so it's going to start from the planning right it's a very very initial stage so what would happen is during this planning the requirements would be in the very very high level okay or it should be the list of pain points uh, like uh, I want to automate this I'm doing this process manually I want to do this automated by the time when I get into office by nine o'clock I want to see this report I want to get the data in every day before nine o'clock, right? That is the, the end user requirement. It's a very, very high level. It could be in this single line of requirement. I want to create a portal. I want to do the process or software for insurance claims, for example, right? So in this phase, many things would happen. They will collect the pain points and the requirements and uh, the budgeting right how to do this and uh, whether we have uh, enough money to do this so this is what is going to happen and then getting into the second phase it's called analysis it has uh, two phases one is analysis when i say analysis it's a requirement analysis and requirement gathering right so in this requirement analysis it's a very very important phase in this stlc so this is usually being done by the business analyst based on many factors it would be done like market trends the input from the domain experts right and uh, this phase helps to find out the basic project approach operational and technical areas and particularly and any impacts risk and various technical approach that is the requirement analysis. Once the requirement analysis is completed, 
then we'll getting into the requirement gathering right here we have the requirements already in the single lines the pain points would be converted into the detail level of requirements generally we call it as SRS document software requirement specification document that contains all the product or business requirements that needs to be designed and developed right so your the single line requirements should be converted into business requirements then user requirements functional and non-functional okay so i'll publish uh, a different video on what are the different types of requirements we have and how to derive it and with an example okay so here we get it as a srs software requirement specification document that would be the base for other phases the design and implementations right so when it comes to the design the srs is the reference for this architects would be involved to find out the best architecture for the product or software to be developed so based on the requirements listed in the SRS the multiple the design approach would be derived so we there are many terminologies used uh, you can something you can call it as uh, DDS design document specifications or other terms are HLD, LLD, the high level design or low level design. The high level design contains the overall architecture and the uh, high level data flow from which entity to which entity, from uh, what is the specific inputs and uh, success and negative criteria. Whereas the LLD, that would be the very detail level. So that is a uh, inputs for the development team it's kind of uh, detail level in the sense kind of a pseudocode right which function we need to create what are the inputs for the functions and what is as to return during the success negative when to log error when to log the information when to exit those informations that is a LLD it's kind of the pseudocode once this design document is done so it would be reviewed by the stakeholders and the architects and based on different parameters the risk timeline constraint and uh, what is the uh, the best design approach right so we have to find out uh, not a single one multiple and then we have to do the bring it to the discussion and then finalize the which one approach we are going to take it forward that is what is happening on the phase three that is the design when it comes to the phase four here the design is being converted into the coding right this is being handled by the development team so we have to use appropriate tools softwares to develop it for example could be anything right uh, whichever fits for it Java or any ETLs or C, C++ or uh, Spark, Scala, Big Data tools, any scripts depends upon the need and uh, the to, by considering the performance. So if the design is prepared very clearly or very detailed and organized manner, the code generation or implementation would be pretty much easy there won't be any issues or any kind of a gaps so there is a huge chances if we miss the the design right the communication gap happens in the phase two and phase three so that's going to cause a lot of problem in uh, phase four and uh, the further phases so there are best practices as being followed for the design and uh, i think i'm going to publish uh, one more video for it what is the best uh, practices are being followed in the requirement and uh, during the design so let's focus on the point number four so once that implementation is done so the development team's responsibility to do the unit testing right before giving into the further testing we have to do the unit testing with test data so you can mock up the data or you can create on your own for 
if I give pass on these two values to the function, what is I'm going to return it according to the positive and negative scenarios that's called the unit testing in order to ensure whatever the code I developed is working as expected, right? And we need to document those results as well, the unit testing documents. So most of the service industry, these are the documents would be documented and it's being audited by their internal team so that there won't be any problems if any escalations or any problem comes from the client. So we have to revisit and see what was the, how the results would capture. Okay, this is happens in the uh, some of the service based companies for documenting the unit test cases for the QA auditing purpose. That's a very good practice uh, being followed in many companies. Coming to the phase five, the testing and integration. So when I say testing and integration, it means a lot. Okay, there are different types of testings we need to do. Uh, let's say the QA, we call it as a quality. And the second is the UAT, user acceptance testing. So what happens is during the implementation, developers develop the code and test with their own data or small, small units, right? They split into small, small units and test it. Once they migrate to the the different system from dev to QA or testing system, altogether the different team has to test it. So how are you going to test it? How the testing team knows that what needs to be tested, right? So the QA team, the testing team, come up with the test cases based on, not from the code. They come up with the scenarios based on the design. That is how they come to know what needs to be tested in the implementation phase. So if we miss out anything in the implementation, any coding, so they'll identify the defect, give it to us. We have to fix it and send it back to them for the testing. Once the QA team tests the specific modules, let's say your software has uh, different uh, phases, uh, sorry, the different models. Let's say the model A, model B. So it would be tested individually. Model A, model B, once the testing is done, it all looks good, then they go for the integration. The integration is integrating all the modules together and test end to end. Then it would be more to the next phase of the testing called UAT. The UAT is user acceptance testing. So that means the users who given the requirement to us, Right, that happened in the analysis. Who given the requirement to the development, we have to do the testing and show the results to them. The user has to accept, the client has to accept the whatever we developed and satisfied with the results. So they are not going to see your code, how many lines you return, what is used, all this. They see this is what my input this is what my output how they will come to know they will take it from the the requirement the qa testing would be done based on the design uat testing is based on the requirements okay so i think in the following videos we can discuss more into the details what are the different types of testing and uh, how it's being done once the UAT is completed and once we get an approval from the stakeholders and the users, yes, we all done, right? The next phase is to deploy it in the, the production environment. The production environment is, it's a live system. Uh, the development team starts from the development system and then coming to the testing, the same code would be migrated to the production environment it's a live system the software would be ready to work for the live data or the real-time data so that is the last phase of the stlc 
once it is deployed and we have to ensure that it's working fine somebody has to monitor that is called the maintenance right somebody has to monitor what is happening with the job whether it's getting failed or success in case of a failure what is the other impacts right that is could be a dependency that other jobs would be get failed or waiting for this to get completed or the users may waiting for they may wait for any specific data reports to be generated right i'm just giving you a few examples so for this we have generally called uh, the production support team from development team they have to give the enough uh, kt or the terminology called handover so we have to give the handover to them before migrating our code to production so that without our dependency or minimal dependency they will monitor the jobs running in the production right and in case of any failure they have to do the analysis and then it would be taken into different right if it's a small fix we can do it if not we have to put it back to the again the analysis phase for the enhancement it would take the again the same route All right so this is what in the high level what is happening in the stlc so if you look at this the stlc has uh, different models okay it's not a the processes segregated into different models so there are few most important popular models are the waterfall model so if you see the different phases once the requirement is done design implementation testing it's kind of the waterfall model and iterative spiral v model is another very important to understand that would give the mapping between the the testing phases and the development and in addition to this we have few more agile right it's very very famous in current trends and we have uh, rad and jad sessions right the joint application developments so i'm not going to talk about very detail in this so this is a introduction for stlc to have a high level idea maybe in upcoming videos we can talk about it very detailly about what is waterfall uh, v model agile and uh, uh, jad sessions what is the importance of it right those things okay let's move on so this is a typical project plan i just mentioned here as an example okay so you can open up an excel you can just mark the timeline it starts from jan to december and what are the different phases what we have seen earlier requirement that covered uh, the planning analysis and requirement gathering design implementation this is covered the testing the qa and uat and once we deploy in the production so i put the timeline over here it takes like from end of jan to mid of feb and it's covered in the mid of april or first week of may all right so this gives the proper timeline and uh, i use the star year that means the first of october we are going live our code will be deployed in production and from there until 3 months it would be in the maintenance phase so this is just a very traditional project plan i just wanted to bring it here for your understanding so the objective of this video to give you the overall picture about what is stlc basic understanding of uh, the phases and the models uh so thank you for watching uh please share your feedback you can add it in the comments and if you uh have any specific topics to be discussed you can add it in the comments so definitely we'll uh, come up with the videos for that so thank you for watching